Good morning, church. Pastor Cameron here. Wanted to uh, wanted to bring you another video devotional, something that uh, I was thinking about recently, something I went through in my own personal devotions. I'd like to turn your attention to 1 Samuel chapter 15, because there's actually some very important principles there that we as Christians often need to be reminded of. And since it's an entire chapter, instead of reading the whole chapter, I'm going to walk through it and just emphasize the key points along the way. So please turn in your Bibles to 1 Samuel 15, and you can follow along with me as we as we start to walk through it. So uh, I'm just going to start right into it. Uh, feel free to pause the video if you need a little extra time. But the the chapter starts with Saul, who was the first appointed king of Israel. And he's, uh, he's been given a command by the prophet Samuel. Now, in the, in the days of the Old Testament, if a faithful prophet from the Lord told you something, it's as if God himself was saying it to you. Okay? And Samuel tells Saul that God is calling him to attack and destroy the Amalekites. The Amalekites were one of Israel's most hated enemies at this period in time. Uh, whenever Israel was uh, passing through Sinai during the exodus from Egypt, the Amalekites were one of the civilizations that actually uh, attacked them. And so now, if we fast forward a little bit, in God's own timing, the day had come for Amalek's long-awaited judgment to come from the hand of Saul. And this judgment Saul was told to bring down on them was, was quite severe, actually. Uh, they were not to leave anyone or anything alive. God told them to go in and even kill the livestock, kill everything. Now, I, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the fact that this, this is kind of an unpleasant thing to think about. All right. It's easy to jump to hasty conclusions that this is cruel and evil. I mean, people say things like, how could God command Saul to do such a heartless thing to an entire civilization? <clears throat> well, I, I, mean, I can certainly sympathize with that, but we, we must remember that the purpose of this was divine judgment. The entire Amalekite nation was to be offered to the Lord in a display of perfect divine justice. Earlier in history, the Amalekites attacked Israel when they were weak and weary wandering through the desert, and they had continued in that wickedness. The measure of God's wrath was now full. And we know that God is just. Therefore, anything he commands can never be unfair or unjust. All right. And today, you know, reflecting on Old Testament stories like this, we must remember the reality of God's coming judgment, which will be, if anything, much worse. God is a holy God, and his first ang fierce anger burns against all sin. Now, there's... There's a lot more that could be discussed on that topic, but for the sake of time, I'm going to move on. But if you, at any time, you wanted to contact me and talk about this further, I'd be more than happy to help. But <clears throat> let's get back to the narrative here. After hearing God's command from the prophet Samuel, Saul gathers together an army, numbering in the thousands, and he attacks the Amalekites. And this, this offensive is victorious. But verse 9 tells us that he spared the king Agag and also kept some of the choice livestock of the Amalekites. He took Agag prisoner and brought him back with him. So he, he didn't follow through with what God commanded him to do. Now someone could look at this and say, well, Saul was merciful to Agag, so this is a good thing. 
Well, we, we don't exactly know what Saul's motivation for sparing Agag was. Some commentators think that Saul was motivated by pride because he wanted to display Agag to everyone and revel in his victory over the hated Amalekites, but we don't know for sure. But the, the bottom line is, God was really not happy with Saul when he did this. And Samuel goes to him and harshly rebukes him for it. He asks him, why didn't you obey the Lord? Why didn't you do what he told you to do? He didn't tell him to take prisoners. He told him to bring judgment upon this wicked civilization. So Samuel takes the matter into his own hands. <laughs> he tells Saul to bring Agag before him, and Agag is, is quite cheerful. He's in, he's in a good mood, and um, he's brought before Samuel. But in verse 32, Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. But Samuel responds with one of the most hardcore lines in the whole Old Testament. In verse 33, he says, As your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. <laughs> you know, he, he's saying, You have robbed many mothers of their sons through your murdering. Well, now, I'm going to take your mother's son away from her. <laughs> And so he took up a sword and he hacked Agag to pieces. I know, it's, it's pretty graphic, but the, the graphic description is actually kind of important here. Before I get to that, I want to address a question that some of you may have. You may be wondering why Agag's death was, was necessary. Why was God so angry that Saul left him alive? Well, for one, he disobeyed God, which in and of itself is enough reason for God to be angry with him, but that's not the whole story. Israel was at war with this awful, wicked nation. And Agag was the king of this pagan nation. And so he was its representative. And many of the, much of the, debra the, the debauchery that occurred was, was done at the order and approval of Agag. So he was kind of the embodiment of this wicked nation. He couldn't be left alive for the same reason that no one was to be left alive. He would have been a very wicked influence, a, a festering disease within Israel. So he had to be eliminated. And not just killed, but violently slaughtered. You know, we Christians today, we're also at war. But our war isn't with a nation, it's spiritual warfare with sin. Christ died on the cross to save us from sin and the eternal judgment that it deserves. Every Christian is constantly fighting battles with our sinful nature and will continue to fight it until the day the Lord calls us home. And how should we be treating sin? Should we be capturing it and throwing it in a cage? I mean, if it's in a cage, it, it can't hurt anyone, right? <laughs> They couldn't possibly start to fester and grow and eventually infect other aspects of our life, could it? No, see, sin cannot be tolerated even in the slightest. There is no room for sin in the life of a Christian. You need to hack it to pieces, just like Samuel did to Agag. And that was why Saul's failure to kill him was so egregious. And that is why the entire civilization of the Amalekites had to be wiped out because they would have been a disease that infected Israel if they had taken any of them in. You know, we, we can read this, the story of the Old Testament 
And we too can benefit from, from something like this because we can use this opportunity for some self-evaluation. So I, I challenge you, take some time for that self-evaluation. Ask God to illuminate areas of your life where you may have some, some agags that you've been keeping alive. And it's been subtly infecting you, influencing your, your thinking and your actions, which will in turn hinder your testimony as well as your Christian growth and maturity. As John Owen said, be killing sin or sin will be killing you. God is not okay with his people tolerating sin in their life. So identify it and hack it to pieces. Well, thanks for, thanks for joining me today. And I really look forward to starting services back up this coming Sunday. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a wonderful time and I'm just really excited to see all of you and have a good day. <laughs>